What's up, everyone? This is Andre from Indie Arts Midwest, and this is my face. All right. All right. Drink it in. I'll wait. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at what I've been working on for the past, I don't know, month or so. So I posted a video a while back about the Arduino RC4 GT, and it surprisingly got quite a few views. And so I decided to just keep going with that because honestly, I just posted it just, you know, for fun because it was just kind of a hobby project that I had in the background that I actually started on uh, six months to a year ago and uh, didn't really get around to posting it until recently. So um, that's why I've just kind of just jumped in and just kept working on it for the most part. Um, I knew that I was going to deal with some setbacks especially when it comes to the IDE side, which is what we're looking at right now, uh, primarily because I didn't really have in any understanding of how to drive motors. I had motor drivers, but I had never used them in any Arduino projects. In fact, that's part of the reason why I purchased them. Well, actually, I take it back. There's actually two reasons I bought it. Um, number one being that they were cheap. They were only $4.99 at Micro Center. And two, um, I had this RC project and I figured there was quite a few other things that I'd probably want to use a motor driver for. So kind of all worked out anyway. So I have this DRV8833. I'm reading off my notes, <laughs> but um, DRV8833 it runs off of uh 2.7 to 10.8 volts. It has 1.5 amp output, three volt, five volt logic, and uh, has two H bridges. That was the best part because I was hoping to find a motor driver that allowed me to control two separate motors. Now, one particular thing that I've come to notice is that, as you'll see in this video when we cut to that part, there are two different types of motors inside of this RC4 GT. Uh, first of which there's a 12 volt that's in the back that's driving the rear wheels. And then in the front side, we have a five volt motor. So. I will prefer, I'll say, to regulate the power distribution based on that um, as the video goes along or possibly in the next video when we take a, another look at the control board or the main board that I have made for this project, we will then worry about separating a 5 volt and 12 volt. If more than likely, I'll end up having to use a buck converter, which means that I'm going to have to make some space on this main board I have sitting here can see and uh, like right here this space here I'll probably have to desolder these it's kind of loose anyway so that's no biggie and uh, just make some space for the buck converter and also the uh, motor driver so that I can have a 12 volt running for to the 12 and a 5 volt running to the 5 I could look into regulating the voltage using pulse width modulation I don't know the maximum voltage on that I'm just assuming it's a five volt motor because it's smaller um, and I could, probably could hit it with some resistors, but I would like to get it down to a specific voltage, which is why I'd prefer to just use a buck converter and I have one sitting around. So why not make the board a little more complex and have a little more fun with the soldering side of things. So that is something that we'll look into later. The reason why I have the ID set up is because I wanted to show you a couple of things based on um, what I have discovered so so let's take a look at this first code that I pulled from online and it was made by this gentleman here back in November of 2020 and as we see later in the video me testing out this high and low has been helpful main part was just getting to see the difference between how the delay functions and then you got different settings for the highs and lows. So you got high and low for the A, high and low for B, and then on the next one, everything is low. Low high, low high, everything's low again. So essentially it's just going forward and backwards, and I guess in an off state, um, which to some degree is good for testing, which is why I have it under DRV8833 test. If I were to open up another one, test two, very similar code. Great. Scroll up. 
and there's no top info about who made it. I Yet another code I just pulled from online. Um, this one though features the integer speed, though it's not actually incorporated in the code. That doesn't mean that it's not an option, but this being here made me question exactly how do I bring that in because I did want to have a set level of torque control on the RC car even though it's not running at max speed because I have just a 9 volt battery uh, connected to it but realistically the battery that it came with is only 9.6 so I'm still within the somewhat voltage uh, limits of the entire board and I really don't plan on pushing it any further than that we will see I mean if I happen to use the regular battery for uh, battery for this project um, then we'll concern ourselves with that additional 0.6 but for now I'm just using a regular 9 volt it's working just fine the only difference is that there are two different types of batteries that I'm using here so I mean you got your 9 volt and then you have your um, it's not a it's like a NIM uh, I'm, I'm not gonna worry about it I'll probably cut that part out anyway, but it's using two different types of batteries, so the output's going to be different as well. So, as I was saying, uh, this code is similar, but this is the main part that intrigued me, was this integer speed. And I spent a lot of time Google searching how I could incorporate that into the code, and I'd like to say that I probably spent more than I, time than I would like to searching for a solution on how to make this work. There was a, quite a few pages that allowed me to at least get a genuine understanding of what I was looking at. But even with the codes that were trying to explain the integer speed, I'm not saying that they didn't do it right or they it's just that it wasn't well explained. And then, of course, you know, there aren't too many videos that are talking about the DRV8833 motor control board on YouTube. So that's yet another reason why I'm glad to be making this video. But I would not have been able to complete it without the help of ChatGPT, which we'll get to later. Um, while I was pulling up the board, though, and just trying to get info on it, I have a few stepper motors that I also wanted to try. And I only ended up testing one because doing the others would require that I have to crimp everything down and set up the little inputs for them to work with my breadboard. So I just tested the one instead just to save me time and come to find out that the two that I thought were stepper motors are just DC motors, which is great for me because, you know, I got these projects, so that'll make it great. I don't know really, I'm not really sure how I thought they were stepper motors. I'm assuming it's just because the tension on the board gave me the impression, but upon testing, I didn't realize, <laughs> no. Uh, so I do have a stepper test. In fact, I think it's the only stepper test I have for now. So we'll take a look at that. Pretty simple. Defines 200 steps. Has the stepper pins that you want to apply them to as your output and then your baud rate. And then stepper speed. So yeah, just forward, backward. I really like how simplistic stepper codes are. I will be using this in a future project for a... I want to build a uh, tower of sorts for 3D scanning because I have a Xbox Connect with Connect Scan software and I would really like to have an automated raise and lower system. So I'll use one of the three or four stepper motors that I have for that. Uh, as soon as I work out the kinks with the pulley system with my dad, because we were talking about that and uh, and how to get that going. I have my ideas. He mentioned something that he thought was pretty cool. Um, I'm kind of doing this from a DIY level, so I'll probably try and stick with what I was doing. But anyway, let's uh, take a look at how I found the solution, which is through ChatGPT. So I love this software. 
it is incredibly useful as far as helping me come up with ideas or to try and think things through. And my take on chat GPT, I'm just going to go on a small tangent here, is that how I've been explaining it to other people is that in a normal situation where you would think twice, chat GPT helps you think three times. So I know that there's a lot of toss ups about whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I guess it really just comes down to how you choose to use it. I know I've seen online people saying, oh, I'm going to use this to uh, write my essays. And while I do understand, I'm just still speaking in tangent mode here. I do understand, but I hope these people do realize that the whole point of an essay is that it came from here. That's, that, you know, but that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong for thinking that or saying that. I don't know. But uh, I don't think it should take over completely. Another prime example would be that when you um, need an idea for a story, because I have a couple of those on here that I'm not going to show, but you can feed it a little bit of information and, and then it rolls out this, oh, well, okay, these are the steps you would need to finish that. And then you're like, oh, wait, no, no, I actually kind of need help with you writing the story with me a little bit. So you throw it some context and it helps you piece things together that way. So I do think that it is, it is ugh, it's extremely helpful with when you happen to be I would, so I will say that it is extremely helpful if you happen to be a one team, a one man team or one person team, I should say. Uh, Let's cut it. All right. So I would say that it's extremely helpful if you happen to be a one person team and you're doing all of the jobs and, you know, you just need a little push in the right direction or maybe you need chat GPT to fill in the gaps for you in certain aspects and you cannot kind of just continue giving it more and more context until you get a project that you're satisfied with. So extremely helpful. And it's cool because you can word things a specific way and depending on how you word it will determine the answer that you get. But in addition to that, you can switch up if you happen to see something that you're not quite pleased with or you want to add a step or take away a step or whatever it is that you want to do. So um, looking at this, I simply asked, using a motor driver and Arduino, how would I control the speed of a 12-volt motor, not just high and low states? Because as I said before, I wanted to incorporate some kind of torque control, and that may be determined by the object avoidance angle so that's why i left this open because i wanted to add additional things to the code but for now i'm pleased with just the motor side and testing that so that's what we have here and it gave me a pretty basic setup on the how to set it up and of course it mentioned the control motor speed and so obviously in order to do that you need to have pwm signals which i knew going in However, I did need to rephrase this a little bit to suit my needs. So um, it asked for just one motor as the enable, and that's for the PWM frequency. And then, you know, you have your input one, input two, enable, input one, out, or enable, output one, output two. And of course, then the analog right and the PWM resolution. So pretty basic code. Of course, it still featured the high and low, but I needed more than that. So after it did its little output, I said, are there parts to define the motor driver pins as analog or digital? Because I wasn't sure, and that really comes down to what kind of board you have as well, because some boards do PWM from the digital, but then you also have analog pins, which clearly show which ones do the PWM control as well. So it goes on this little explanation about that. And this is the part that surprised me is that when I mentioned that I'm using a DRV8833, I'm not sure how this pulls in information, but for the simple fact that it was able to specifically talk about the motor driver module that I had was an extreme help. So, of course, it does the standard explanation of this is all stuff that I already knew. But it also wanted to mention controlling the speed just based on this 
particular module, which I was extremely appreciative of. And, um, and it obviously it showed me an example code just based on the DRB8833. But I needed more. So um, I asked what it would look like. So I asked what it would look like if I had two motors. And so it spat out a code featuring additional input pins and additional output pins, as well as the digital write. So I asked, wouldn't I need two PWM pins? Because I thought that was kind of weird. It was asking me up here that the PWM pin was set to 128. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's cool. But I only really needed to do two separate things because maybe a PWM for steering and then a PWM for the rear wheels. And I don't have a full explanation on why I want it to work like that as of yet because I haven't gotten to that particular feature. So I still would like to at least have the option of seeing the functionality of the code. So um, it did point out that I was correct. I do need to set PWMs to control the speed of two separate motors. And so it nicely updated the code for me to feature an additional PWM with separate values and explain that this one's at 50% and this one's at 75% because the max is 255, which is pretty awesome. So beyond that, I was a little weary that, okay, I have this test code, which is what I'm calling this one in particular. What about being able to control them with potentiometers? Because I do have some, but I have not prepared them. So I wanted to take the time to at least have the code available for when I have that level of input. So All right, so then I asked about potentiometers because I figured I would want to do some testing with controlling the forward and reverse at some point. And it would have been, you know, All right, so then I asked if it could add some potentiometer input as well because I wanted to control the forward and reverse. So it also added that additional to the code. I do have potentiometers available. They're not prepared, but when I am ready to use this particular part of the code, I now have it available. So it also read the analog read from the potentiator pin one or pinch blah, 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 potentiometer. <laughs> So it has the read values here, and then it will spit those values out based on and based on its min and max, and then provide a output based on the max for the PWM. So I still have high and lows, that still counts, but now I have a fully functional code, which we will test later, and we will see how everything works. So um, In the end, I'll say that I really appreciate the use of this particular AI program because I myself am a one person team. And it's not just along the lines of Arduino or or just coming up with stories, but also game design. Um, sometimes I use it for just uh, thinking through things that are plausible based on movies and stuff like that. So uh, I do like the fact that it can give insight. And as I said before, allows you to think three times, which is very important, I'd say, in this day and age, because apparently thinking twice isn't enough. But anyway, um, as far as the coding side, as I said before, it was extremely helpful in saving me time on having to Google search things. In fact, I could say the same thing about coming up with blueprints in Unreal. And I'm pretty sure if I already know that it helps with coding for Unity, no problem. But at least I have the option to help come up with different blueprint angles, which I have in the past. 
And for the most part, it's been helpful. But I'd say on the coding side of things, it's definitely saved me time of having to do uh, seemingly endless searches through forums and trying to read between the lines of someone explaining this to someone else. Dead forums. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the testing. And if you haven't tried chat GPT yet, I highly recommend you at least give it a shot and see what you can do with it. You know, talk to it, do whatever you want, but mainly the coding stuff, if that's something you're into, it is a very helpful medium in relation to doing a ton of searches online. It kind of saves you a lot more time and then you can get back to doing the thing that you love, which is the hobby you've been working on and probably a project you've been putting off for who knows how long, that's up to you. But either way, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and the content that I'm putting forward. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.